Right, we have here today with us Shereen Balki. She is IFA's Director of Retirement Services and has more than three decades of experience working with large corporate record keepers and advisors on 401k, 403b related retirement savings plans. Hi, Shereen. Uh, thanks for joining us again today. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me join you. Uh, what are some of the more common employee education features being offered these days in retirement programs that plan participants, employees uh, should be aware of? Well, employees should be aware of the availability of a plan advisor. Uh, most plans do have an advisor attached to the plan, and these advisors can be very helpful with a portfolio selection and explaining the investment options. Oh, okay. The um, are the is it easy to find out uh, and contact the advisor? Yes, that information should be available. Certainly, if there's annual presentations, the advisor would provide the contact information there. There's oftentimes follow up emails, and it's also sometimes in some of the literature and online material. You'll see the advisor's name. Okay. And, and I uh, assume there's also online tools like risk capacity surveys, retirement analyzers, budget calculators that are commonly made available to plan participants. Yes. And those can often be found on the record keeping website or the advisor sometimes also provides a microsite. So there's a lot of really useful tools to help the employee determine if they're, you know, going to, if they're not in line for retirement. Okay. And education articles and videos, uh, educational articles and videos, I should say, uh, are, are also common on these micro sites? Yes, yes. On both the record keeping sites and on the, the plan advisor micro sites, you can find some useful education articles. You know, at IFA, we provide monthly employee communication articles to all of our plan sponsors for distribution to um, their employees. And we also provide a quarterly plan sponsor digest to the plan sponsor with useful information. Okay. Just a, a question. Uh, I know uh, different advisors do it differently, but at IFA, they make the risk capacity surveys, the retirement analyzers, the budget calculators, the Monte, uh, Monte Carlo retirement simulation tools available to plan participants? Yes. Yes, those are available, you know, 24-7, and I do review those tools when I conduct my employee education sessions. Oh, okay. Um, also, should plan participants uh, be looking at their ability to roll over prior 401k balances to their, their new 401k, if appropriate? Yes, and I think that's important because if you have accounts out there from prior employers, um, you want to look at with, and you can get your uh, some help from your advisor. You want to take a look at the plan provisions, the costs, um, any limitations that there might be in each of those accounts, and determine if it makes some sense to consolidate and roll over some of those assets into your current plan. Okay, and of course, again, there's education presentations provided by the advisor and our record keeper, correct? Yes, yes, and we recommend at least annually. There are some plans that actually conduct presentations uh, to their employees more frequently. And that could be online, it could be in person. You know, we, we do we do what's ever comfortable, whatever makes sense for, for the employee group. Okay. And uh, turning to small business owners, as far as starting a retirement plan for employees, what should they be uh, really looking at? Well, they'll want to talk to their advisor about their options because, um, one size does not fit all. So you've got, you know, 401k plans, 403b, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs, and it can be kind of confusing to know which option is, is appropriate. So they, the plan sponsors and the small business owners will want to discuss with their advisor what makes sense for them. For example, the 401k, which is overseen by Department of Labor and IRS regulations, that requires a much more administrative work than does the simple IRA or the SEP IRA. So for small business owners, they do want to take a look at some of those simpler tools to see if that makes more sense. And, and I guess there's trade-offs among the various options too. Uh, some plans are obligated to make an 
uh, a match um, for uh, uh, for plan participants. Um, other plans, you, you don't have to make as big of a match as a business. Right, right. So that's something that the plan sponsor will want to look at is what is their obligation in terms of, you know, matching. For example, the 401k plans, they don't require an employer match, but the simple IRAs, they do require an employer match. And some options are more, require a lot more administrative work and help than others. The the reason why they call it simple IRA is because it's very simple. So you don't have a lot of these Department of Labor and IRS regulations. So it really depends on staffing and it depends on what the owner's uh, priorities are. What is their objective with regard to the the retirement plan? And then finally, I wanted to ask you, there not all retirement plan advisors or consultants are the same. Um, some are fiduciary uh, and have to follow fiduciary guidelines. Some don't, correct? Correct. Um, the the le- letters or the, the numbers 338 are thrown out a lot. And so there are 338 advisors that take on a fiduciary role. So they have investment discretion with regard to building portfolios and investment discretion with regard to the the options that are being uh, given or or that are in the plan. So that's different from say like a 321 where they are not a fiduciary uh, alongside or do not have discretion over the assets in the plan. And and IFA I assume is 338? We are. We are 338. So we do have discretion over the plan options. Hmm. Is that more expensive for the employer or the participant? No, not necessarily. Um, And that's something that needs to be explored as well. So when the plan is being set up, the the plan sponsor is going to need to look at all fees. And then those include advisor fees. So the 338 is not necessarily more expensive, but you want to make sure that the plan sponsor understands what they're getting when they're hiring a 338. Okay. And that is helping with the the legal responsibilities, right? Of uh, uh, helping their plan participants. Absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of 338s um, will take on those education sessions uh, with employees and will meet with them you know, say you have a group session, then maybe afterwards you can meet individually with each plan participant to help them with their portfolio selection and the understanding of the various investment options. But yeah, that is something that we do and we do it regularly. And our investment man- investment management agreement does cover um, these services. Yeah. And I, I know we wanted to wrap it up after this, but I have one more follow-up question for you, um, Shireen, and that is, uh, ha- is there a way to benchmark the uh, the expenses and the costs that um, small business owners and plan participants might be facing? Yes. So um, a good 338 or a good investment advisor will benchmark the fees in the plan. And so, for example, at IFA, we benchmark every three years or so, and we use an outside um, third party to help us with the benchmarking. So we're gathering, obviously, our advisor fees, record-keeping fees, TPA fees. Uh, We're looking at the investment option fees, and we're comparing it to a universe of similarly situated plans. So we might have, you know, 60 to 70 plans that we're comparing based on size and participant count. And we'll do that every year. If, If the fees seem a little um, out of whack, then we're going to approach uh, maybe the record keeper or the TPA or have a discussion with the plan sponsor about the fees and what needs to be done. And we may end up, you know, obtaining quotes from other record keepers, but we definitely want to make sure that the plan sponsor understands their fees. And the Department of Labor is not very uh, compassionate uh, to plan sponsors who don't have a full understanding of the fees that are being paid. And again, that all wraps into your fiduciary um, responsibilities at IFA. Absolutely, and 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 we help. We're helping the plan sponsor with their fiduciary responsibilities because it's very important that the plan sponsor understands fees. We've seen a lot of litigation in the marketplace with regard to fees, so it's very important that they understand them. Okay, thank you very much, Shereen. Thank you, Mary.